we are starting probability, which means we want to go through a bunch of terms, some words that we use in probability. Unfortunately, for some people, myself included, the thing that is not so fun about probability is the wordiness of the questions. There is a lot of things that you have to be able to read and understand before you can answer the questions. Okay, so that can be a little bit of an obstacle. Sometimes it helps to highlight the important parts of a question so that you're not getting distracted by all the extra stuff that they put in the questions. All right, let's read through. So these are the key ideas or the terminology. First thing we're going to look at, a chance experiment. So there is a term, there is an example, and there's a definition of each thing. So the definition of a chance experiment is an activity which may produce a variety of different results which occur randomly. The example is given by a single step experiment. So it means you've got to do something once and you can get a variety of outcomes. And most of the examples that are in here are referring to a dice. So if you had a normal six-sided dice, the, each of the numbers on there, there are six different numbers that you could get. Those are the different variables or the different, um, what do they call them? A variety of different results that you could, be, could get. Okay, the next word we want is a trial. A trial is when an experiment is performed one or more times. So if we only roll the dice once, that's one trial. But we could do it multiple times. We don't need to close those to cut the banging down. Thank you. Thank you. So it says here, rolling a dice 50 times would mean that there is 50 trials that you are doing. The next word is an outcome. An outcome is one of the possible results of your experiment. So when I roll my dice, rolling a five is one of those outcomes that I could get. There is also some others, but that was just an example of one. Equally likely outcomes means that there are two or more results that have the same chance of occurring. So on your dice, a five and a six both have the same chance of occurring. On a coin, a head and a tail have the same chance of occurring. So they are called equally likely outcomes. Okay, next box. Sample space is what we call the list or the set of all possible outcomes in your experiment. And there's a special way that we write it. And this is an example of the special way that we write it. We use these funny curvy brackets on the ends. And inside there, you list off all the different, every, don't miss any, you have to list every outcome that you could possibly get. So on a dice, it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, next, an event. An event is either one outcome or a collection of outcomes. It is a subset of the sample space. So it could be one or multiple of the outcomes in our sample space. So it could be rolling a two. Rolling a two would be a one event thing. Rolling an even number could be a two, a four, or a six. Okay, so there is three different things that would fit that criteria or for that event. A compound event is a collection of two or more outcomes from the sample space. So rolling an even number, that would be a compound event. Mutually exclusive are two or more events that share no outcomes. So we're looking at two different things and the example is rolling a five and rolling an even number. Because a five is not an even number, they are called mutually exclusive because one is not affecting the other. One is not a part of the other group. But non-mutually exclusive, a five is an odd number. So there is an overlap between those two different groups that I'm naming there. So that's non-mutually exclusive. Complementary events. If all the outcomes in the sample space are divided into two events, they are complementary events. So here is my dice divided into two categories. I could say the first thing might be getting a two or a three. That's my first event. And my second event would be rolling everything else. So the one, three, four, one, four, sorry, five and six. If 
complementary event and a complement, they sound very similar. What's the small difference? Let's read the definition. If an experiment was performed and an event did not occur, then the complement definitely did occur. Okay, so if I said I, I rolled my um, dice and a two, three, four or five did not occur, that means that either a one or a six did occur. Complement. The other event must have happened. Favourable outcomes. The favourable outcomes are the ones that we want. So if we want the probability of rolling a six on a dice, then that would be the favourable outcome. Theoretical probability and then experimental probability. They're two different things. In theory, when you roll a dice, this is theoretical probability, in theory when you roll a dice, there should be a one in six chance of rolling any of the numbers. So it says in here of rolling, oh, it says an even number. But let's use the example of a six. We would have a one in six chance of rolling a six. But experimentally, if you actually sat there and rolled the dice, it says here 600 times, it might not exactly work out to be one sixth of that or a hundred times that you would get a six. Games don't always work like that. Okay, you might be sitting down playing a game at home and it's not every one in six times that you get a certain number. Sometimes some numbers seem to roll more than others. So for these kind of ones, the experimental ones, they will give you the information. They might say a six rolled 150 times out of 600, something like that. And they'll give you the information to work on and you will find the experimental probability. Okay, getting through it. These words here are words that we use to describe the likelihood of an event occurring. So we have a range from certain all the way down to impossible. If something is certain, it means it is definitely going to happen. So this is the example, rolling a number less than seven will definitely happen on a dice that has numbers one to six on it. Okay, something that is likely to happen means it's got a very good chance, not definite, but a very high chance of happening, which would be maybe rolling a number less than six because it's including everything but the six. So you've got five chances out of six of happening, which is pretty high. Even chance means you want exactly a 50-50 chance that you'll get what you've said. So rolling a one, two or three, that's half of your numbers. So that would be an even chance. Unlikely, there's still a chance that you'll do it, but not very much. So rolling a two, it's a pretty low probability. So unlikely and impossible, obviously means you can't get it at all. So rolling a seven is impossible to do on a six sided dice. The sum of all probabilities in an experiment is always equal to one. It says it over here in the words. The sum of the probabilities in all outcomes of a chance experiment is always equal to one. Sometimes we talk in percentages, so they've also got in there 100%. Most of the time we work with fractions, occasionally decimals and percentages. The sum of the probabilities of an event and its complement, well, that means would also be equal to one. The simplest example of that would be something like um, a, a coin. The probability of getting a head is a half, the probability of getting a tail is a half, they're the only two outcomes and when you add them together you're going to get one. Okay, the event and its complement will always add to give a probability of one. All right, that was a lot of words. Unfortunately, I'm hoping that you're going to remember those. No, nope? all right, let's give it a go. Year seven. Question one. What we want to do is match each of the events from A to D, little a to little d, with a description of how likely they are to occur in the capital A to capital D on the right hand side there. Okay, so remember, not all the words are used there, but we did just talk about the names that we give to describing things. The words were certain, likely, even chance is in the middle, um, unlikely, oh. and impossible. 
I didn't, I think my hand did it on the screen. Okay, so what we might do is we'll go through all of these ones over on the left and see if we could work out what we think the probability would be so that we can match it up with the descriptor over there on the right. So if a coin is tossed and it lands heads up, a head is a one out of two chance. A one out of two chance is what we call an even chance, 50-50, half. So that means that this one down here is going to be A. I'm going to, I'm going to write it. I mean, you could draw lines down there, but it could get messy. So I'm just going to write A next to the one that fits. For B, selecting an ace from a fair deck of 52 playing cards. This is what every card that is in a pack of cards. So there are four suits, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. There is 13 in each one of the suits. And we're going to start with the ace. Ace is, in a lot of games, considered the first card. But then we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So they're all our number cards. And then these ones at the end are called our court cards. We have the jacks, queens, and kings. Other things that you need to know is that two of them are black coloured suits and two of them are red coloured suits because you get questions like that. Um, so it's good to know what, a pack, what is in a pack of cards. No. So if a question, if you're asked something about a pack of cards, we don't include jokers. It would only be those cards that I'm showing you there. And there is 52 of them, 52 cards there in total. So the question that we were looking at, it said selecting an ace from a fair deck of 52 cards. So there's one, two, three, four aces, one in each of the suits. So wrong thing. Let's go over here. As a probability, I could say that's a four out of 52 card chance. Now that's pretty low. It's not impossible. It's definitely not half. It's lower than half. So in my scale here, certain, likely, even chance. It's a less than even chance, but not impossible. So we would describe it as being unlikely. Okay, so here's my unlikely here in A. So I'm going to put a B next to that to match that one up. So B, my 4 in 52 chance, is what we call unlikely. Oh, because this is them in order. I just thought it might be nice to see them in order. That's These ones are all mixed up. Question C, obtaining a number other than six if a fair-sided, six-sided dice is rolled. So anything other than a six would be the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So that would be a five out of six chance. That's pretty high. It's almost all of them. It's not all of them, so it's not definite, but it's definitely on the high end of the scale. Not certain, but it would be likely. So likely is the B. So let's put the C here over there next to that one. And hopefully that means this last one matches impossible, but let's read it. Obtaining a number greater than eight if a fair-sided dice is rolled. There are no eights on a dice, so that would be a zero out of six or just zero, just plain zero, because you can't get it. So that is definitely impossible. So let's put that one over here, D. Okay, question two. State the missing words in these sentences. And again, that list of blue words that I've got there, they're the words that I'm choosing from. The sentence is, if an event is guaranteed to occur, we say that it is certain. Part B, if an event that is equally likely to occur or did not occur, if is equally likely, can you face the front, please? I've asked you, the teacher in the other room has asked you, face the front. It's an even chance. A rare event is considered unlikely. Good. And an event that will never occur is impossible. impossible. 